This time on the show, the king is dead! Long live the king! We review Backtrack's successor, Kali Linux, then human interface device attacks with ease. Darren checks out the USB rubber ducky payload generator, then hacking at 55 miles per hour. We hear your ideas on Hack Across America. All that and more, this time on Hack 5. This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by GoToAssist. Hello, welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. And I'm Shannon Morse. Hey, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Yeah, it's good to be back. Everything went well last week and I got some good news on Easter, so I'm very happy and I'm in a very good mood. I'm happy to hear that. Yay. Greg missed you. I missed Greg. You know, he's he's such a good supporter of Hack 5 and I really appreciate the fact that he keeps on filling in for us whenever mm -hmm. we're out. So, and even though his teeth really hurt whenever he decides that he's he feels like eating meat, um, but it, it's cool. Yes. Yeah, I like Greg. Yes. And, and you know what? Uh, we're, we've got the hack wall back with us, not we just do. Greg. Hello, we got DD3 and Hibby and T and uh, Cosmos and CMOS. In there. Yeah, yeah, everybody. So uh, you can you find all of that at hack5.org slash live, and we pretty much just tweet it and put it on Google Plus when we're shooting the show. So That's you can come and yeah. say hi. So yeah, that was cool. Um, we have a lot in Yeah, we really today. do have to so, cover. So what are, what are we getting into? So I am checking out the new successor for. Um, What's it called? Backtrack. <laughs> <laughs> What's it called? Backtrack. Called um, Cali Lewis. Oh, nice. Are we going to penetration <laughs> oh. test Cali Lewis? Well, we might. <laughs> no. Um, Cali Linux. Cali <laughs> Linux. That's the one. <laughs> is the new uh, successor to Backtrack. So I would just wanted to um, basically just give it a bit of a rundown and tell you a little bit about the history, where the heck this came from. I'm excited about this because I'm using it in my segment a little later in the show, talking about fun ways to make USB rubber ducky attacks you. with ease. Awesome. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and boot into it because I think we should just get right into it. What do you say? All right, let's tour Cali, Lu Cal Cali, Cali Linux. Cali Linux. <laughs> I blame there. this on our buddy. See, now there. we need to get Cali. We up. need to get like video of Cali Lewis running Cali Linux now and just make it all recursive and very confusing. So while I'm getting this booted up, I wanted to go ahead and give you a little bit of the backstory. We're all really familiar with Backtrack, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, it's been around for seven years now. Exactly. So offensive security basically um, took it under, the, under its wing, and they made Backtrack what we know and love and hold dear to our hearts. But where did Backtrack come from? That was originally based on Debian and GNU, and it was aimed for penetration testers, and it was aimed for digital forensics. So it's not something that you would live in every day, you know, and it, it had a whole bunch of tools that you can um, actually use for penetration testing. And, and so that's the thing about backtracking to these other security distributions is there's pretty much two takes on it, right? You've either got the distribution that you just boot into for when yeah. you need to do pen testing, like backtrack, where you're always running as root, which would never do <laughs> never. all the time. Uh, and then you have things like, you know, backbox. And then there's, there's a, I think there's a crunch bang version of Linux that's made for yeah. uh, pen testing. And we've talked about some of these in the past. And, and I think what's interesting, though, is that the reason for all of this is there's so many awesome tools. And we see these, you know, debuting at, you know, the DEF CONs and the Black Hats of the yeah, world and true. cover these conferences where an author will come out with some really awesome proof of concept code that does a pretty wicked hack. And then it's not always maintained as best as you, you might hope. Right, exactly. And so sometimes it's like still a really useful tool. Like Ettercap, up until recently, hadn't been, you know, in fact, it was only they, wait, when. They updated Ettercap? <laughs> because it got new ownership. Oh, yes. okay. <laughs> and so that's an example of a tool that, that does something awesome, does it well, and it doesn't necessarily need to keep adding right, features as yeah. long as it keeps working, except the dependencies that it uses are kind of all over the map. And so, it, and so true. it ends up just being such a pain to just get all of the tools you want to use all in the same place. And this is why live Linux distributions are so awesome because you can literally have a different OS just yep. for different, in this case, a different uh, tool, penetration testing. Now, you did speak on a couple of things that I'll discuss a little bit later on into the segment regarding Kali Linux itself. But first off, with uh, Backtrap, Backtrack, one of the reasons why it came to be is because they merged a couple of different distros, and they made that into one. They took, uh, f the first one was Wax, which was originally based off of Wapix, uh, which is based right. off of Nopix. So, so. so Wax is a Slacks version yes. of Wapix. Yes. 
Yes. And then there was also and Wapix. The... <laughs> Wapix was a fork of Nopix. Yeah. <laughs> and and Nopix popularized live CDs at the time. It did. And one of those is the Auditor Security Collection, which is a live CD or now a live USB. Uh, based on Nopix that had all sorts of tools, up to like 300 different security tools that you could use for you know, security and penetration software uh, for you know, testing. So what is Kali Linux? So this one is also built by Offensive Security and it's made by makers of the Backtrack uh, software that you know and love, the OS. Now Backtrack was basically redesigned from the ground up. Uh, with Debian standards, actually. So it's a little bit different from what we're used to. Right, because previously there was your slash pen test directory in Backtrack, yeah. and that's where all of those tools lived. And now all of those tools are just standard Debian packages, yes. which makes things a lot, a lot easier, easier to update. Exactly. In fact, previously it was like one of those things where it's like, don't update, it's going to break everything. <laughs> you know. And then sometimes you could, and sometimes you couldn't, and then there would be different reversions like Backtrack 5 R1, R2, yeah. and and whatnot, so, so yeah, that's what exciting. So what they did now is, I know this is kind of surprising for some people, it's actually, Kali Linux is actually a successor of Backtrack. So this is the pretty much new version, Kali Linux is, of what you're going to see. But they're uh, not calling it Backtrack 6. They're not. Because they say that it's so different. And it is, it's very different. Um, this one was just released last month, so it's brand, brand new. And it's open source, of course, I mean, how could it not be? has 300 tools, tools that all automatically work in the Kali atmosphere. Now, the first thing that they changed about this is the file system, a file system hierarchy standard compliance. So that means that you can locate directories and binaries like you normally would in a Linux OS that you're used to, which is a little bit different. Also, they claim that it has vast wireless support. So I'm sure you're familiar unless with of having course lots you're, of things break. Unless, of course, you're rocking a Broadcom. Chip. Yeah, I yeah. heard that Broadcoms In don't fact, work as well. Isn't that what you have right here? I do, but we'll um, surprisingly, I was able to get on the wireless with okay. no problems on mine. So maybe they have already updated it with the the new bug, uh, the new bug information that they've been getting on their website. So cool. you know they're working on it daily. So I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, also, it's really, really secure. Of course, it's reliant for penetration testers, and it has ARM support. Surprisingly, so you can use this with the Raspberry Pi, Chromebook things like that. So Backtrack 5 introduced ARM support, and that's one of the beauties of all Linuxes, is yeah. the whole idea was never like, oh, let's make a cool little x86 thing. No, it's like, yeah. it's adaptable, and so. It is. Uh, you can put Linux on, uh, we, we've seen it, oh, well, we've seen it on the Zip It, you know, yes, for example. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember if that was necessarily ARM. Um, of all of these features, the one thing that does excite me the most is the Chromebook because you can get one of those yeah. guys for like 200 bucks. You can and, have a $200. And what we're talking about, a, a Linux Kali distribution being distro. a um, being a tool, it's not you know something that you live in day to day. Yeah. Rather than say having a, you know a live USB that you or a live CD that you boot into when you need, well hell, I mean 200 yeah. bucks and you got a Chromebook that runs exactly. Kali. That's your now. That's Yay! your hacker box, and then you've got your regular box. Now, speaking of which, um, li with live builds, Debian live build scripts are automatically um, included with the Kali Linux distros, so you can create your own custom ISOs if you want to. So which I is super could. Easy. So I could take photos of Kirby and then <laughs> set them as the wallpaper in Kali Linux. If you wanted to. And then use these live build tools to make Kirby Linux. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Kirby Linux. Wait, isn't there... Uh, that sounds kind of... There's Is not there? a Kirby Linux there's yet? A, there's a puppy Linux. Uh, there's yeah, there's a puppy. Yeah. I must be thinking of Kerberos. Oh, I do yeah. like the Kerberos. Which is... Which trivia! Yay! Uh, Kirby is named after Kerberos, the authentication protocol. It's true. Yeah, as well as Cerberos, the three-headed demon that protects the river Styx underworld to... Anyway, we're totally off topic now. What we were are. we talking about? So we're talking about Kelly Linux, and I just had it booted up. I'm running this in forensics mode on my machine. All right, let's switch over to it. Okay. So as you can see, I have already booted into it. This is the Kelly Linux forensics mode. Uh, not the default mode, but this is um, basically the same thing. It's pretty similar. The first thing I noticed is the background, of course. 
Yes, it's very much hearkening back to WAPIX and it kind yeah. of shows some of that lineage. If you look at like WAPIX 2.7, same kind of wallpaper. Yep. And in fact, it's that kind of little dragony guy has been part of Backtrack for quite a while. So I love the dragon. That makes He's me happy. He's adorable. Also, keep in mind the password is Tor, of course. Yes. Go figure. I mean, that's the default. Um, I, I forgot when I <laughs> logged out of it and I was like, well, I'll, God, I can't get back in. It's almost like, like oh, they yeah, should have tour. a conference about that password. Hmm. <laughs> what could it be? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so... Um, so you have your, you know, your regular menus up here, um, terminals up here. Is, right, so this places. is GNOME 2 based. Yeah, so, so it's go... all GNOME. And then down here under Kali Linux is where you're going to find all of your different tools. And they do have lots of tools pre pre-installed for you that um, they have tested, they know work with the program. So if I go up here to top 10 security tools, we have Hydra, of course, Maltigo, Metasploit. Love Maltigo. Metasploit is awesome that it's pre-installed. Um, Wireshark. And Bam. so that menu, though, follows the, uh, the, the the same you know hierarchy that we've been used to in Backtrack, yes. which is important because the offensive security training material then doesn't really change. Yeah, So every that's time true. that they say Backtrack, you just substitute with Kali Linux. So they don't have to worry too much about that. That's Yeah, that's a good point. So, um, what else can I mention? Oh, yeah, you're running as root automatically. So, like we said, this in. is not your default yes. everyday OS. So, this is definitely not what you want to use every day, but for penetration testing, it's super easy. Everything's pre configured for you. And one of the nice things that I like about offensive security with either Backtrack or uh, Kali now is that you can download a VMDK. You can download a VMware image straight from their website rather than getting an ISO and booting off USB. Yes. If you want to go that route, I have heard anecdotally some people having some problems getting um, VirtualBox. You know, guys know how I like yeah, VirtualBox, but I'm sure all of that stuff will get worked out because it is—it's it a new code base. This is really exciting for them. Um, it is. It's only been out for a couple of weeks, but on their website, they have adamantly been updating it. There's an IRC channel. There's forums. They have a bug tracker, so you can uh, let them know about any kind of bugs that you run into while you're installing this on your machine. So they're really, really adamant about making sure that this works on you know, everybody's machines. Cool. Well, hey, you know, I'm going to be using uh, Callie Lewis here Yay. just a bit in, in the next block to uh, put together some hit attack goodness. Ooh. So uh, stay tuned for that. And in just a bit, uh, we'll be right back after this. More and more people are working from the cloud, using different devices, working from anywhere. And if you're in IT supporting all of those customers and employees, that can be a real challenge. And that's why I highly recommend GoToAssist by Citrix. It's an easy to use cloud-based platform that allows you to assist anyone, anywhere, on any device. GoToAssist is one integrated tool set that includes a service desk, making it easy to log and track incidents, remote support to quickly resolve people's technical issues on any PC, Mac, or mobile device, and monitoring to proactively scan your entire IT infrastructure and fix those issues before they become a big problem. That's when you're gonna to wanna to do it now, not then. And with GoToAssist, you'll be equipped with those powerful tools so you can easily adapt to your customer's needs and deliver remarkable customer experience. If you're in IT, you need to try GoToAssist. I used them for years when I was a systems administrator. Let me tell you, I would never go back to IT without this in my tool, set, tool kit. Uh, and you can sign up for your special 30-day free trial today. Just visit gotoassist.com, click on the Try It Free button, and use the promo code HAK5. That's gotoassist.com, promo code HAK5. You guys know I am a huge fan of the USB rubber ducky of human interface device hacking, and I figured that given that we're checking out the new Kali or Kali Linux, this would be a perfect opportunity to use it with a tool that's custom built for Backtrack 5 slash Backtrack 6 slash Kali by Skysploit from our very own community called the Simple Ducky Payload Generator. And with all of that, let's go ahead and get into hacking our own box. So let's dive right in. I'm in Kali Linux here, and I've already gone ahead and downloaded the latest version of the simple Ducky Payload Generator. It's now got the international keyboard mappings. This is really cool. You should check it out on the Hack5 forums. It's also here over on uh, code.google.com. You can pretty much just grab a copy. It already has all of the, it's already made to work with Backtrack 5 and Kali. And um, there's really not a whole lot you need is, uh, other than perhaps updating some dependencies. But all of that 
is done for you in a menu-driven interface, which makes it really easy to generate payloads. Of course, what we're talking about here is human interface device hacking, a, um, you know, a tool that will allow you to emulate a keyboard because keyboards represent humans. And if there's one thing computers trust, it's humans. So let's do that. I've uh, gone ahead and already downloaded it here to my Kali Linux distribution. And if I CD to turn off numlock, there we go. And we should be able to see this pretty well here now. Um, and if I go to encoder, and we can see I'm in slash root slash ducky slash encoder. And there's my simple ducky script here. Uh, if you want to change the directory, you just have to do a find and replace within simpleducky.sh. But otherwise, with it living right here, I can go ahead and fire it up. So it's all menu driven. It should be very easy to navigate and set up if you've used something like the SE Toolkit before. It ties in with Metasploit to go ahead and create those interpreter shells and all of those other fun things right there. And I really like how extensible this is. It's just basic comp files to go ahead and add to this. So I'm really excited about having you know, a tool for basically automating the generation of payloads rather than you know, just sharing them on the forums and doing a lot of copying and pasting and tweaking them to your own. Uh, so let's go ahead and first clean up the directory to get rid of any of this stuff that I've done in the past. And I've already updated my JDK. It does not replace the 1.6 that comes with Kali Linux. Um, and then so after this, we pretty much just choose if we're going to do a Windows reverse shell, if we're going to do some Wi-Fi fun, if we're going to do some Linux and OS 10 hacking. That'd be fun. But let's just go ahead and own our own box with a reverse shell. I'm going to, I'm, as you can see, I actually have Kali Linux here running inside of a virtual machine inside of my Windows box. So we're going to have the, um, we're going to have my guest own the host, as it were. But that should be fun. All right, so let's go ahead and create. We've got a couple of different choices here when it comes to reverse shells. We've got a persistent reverse shell, which is really nice because uh, that one is basically going to be set up so that every time the computer boots, it's going to try to contact the mothership and give you a nice little shell, which is really cool. Uh, we could also just do like a regular drop a shell right now without ever even needing to download any code where it just goes ahead and injects base64 encoded ASCII right into the command prompt and then using a little C script, compile it over into a binary and run it which is really nice because then you're not setting off any IDSs about some download or whatever. Um, as well as having one of my very favorites, thanks to Mubix over here, the PowerShell download and execute. It's just such a simple thing. It's basically the Windows equivalent to wget and run. Um, and then all of these, you get to choose whether or not you know your victim has UAC enabled or not. And as you can see, there's also um, compatibility with both Windows uh, Vista slash 7 as well as newer Windows 8 stuff. But my host here is running Windows 7. I do have UAC, and I would like it to be persistent. So let's go ahead and choose number one. And this is really nice. All I have to do is go ahead and answer a few simple questions like, who is going to be the admin for this account that we're creating? We're basically adding a backdoor that we're always going to have access.